What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another movie review. I'm Chase Lee, reviewing for DallasMovieScreenings.com, and the movie I want to take a look at right now is Bombshell. Now, this one comes from Lionsgate. It is directed by Jay Roach, and this one tells the real-life story of Gretchen Carlson and Megyn Kelly as they, when they worked for Fox News as anchors, they finally stood up to Roger Ailes, their their boss. He was the, the head over the entire network. And they decide to sue him because of his sexual harassment and this kind of toxic atmosphere that he just created for everybody. And and there was a lot of people that just felt uncomfortable around him. A lot of people that were harassed and didn't say anything because of his his seat and power. You know, he has a lot of power over these people. And so it's a lot of intimidation tactics and everything. So they finally stood up. They called him out. Gretchen Carlson had evidence. And then Rupert Murdoch, the head of Fox was just like, no, this is, she caught you. Okay, I can't help you. Like, you need to go. So he fires Roger, and then, of course, Roger um, passes away shortly after. Um, it was actually pretty soon, because I remember this whole thing unfolding, and I think it was like three or four years ago. And as soon as he was let go from Fox, it seemed like instantaneously, like two or three months later, he was gone. So, um yeah, and then a bunch of other women uh, came out that worked at uh, Fox News and saying that he harassed her or harassed them in um, some specific way, whether it be verbally, emotional, or physical. And a lot of you know people just kind of backing up this claim that he was just a bad person. So before I get into my review, I'm only going to say this once, and I'm just going to go ahead and review the movie. This movie review has nothing to do with any political stance, political ideology. So if you want to get in the comments section, when I say Roger Ailes was a bad man, then that's your right to do that. But every single time when I do anything that deals with anything political, there's always trolls in the comments section just doing their thing. And I realize that I shouldn't have or let this, you know, worry me so much. And, you know, I've had some people in the comments section saying I you know, I shouldn't do these anymore. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm still showing my face on these things. And I still have the comments section down there for you guys to comment whatever you want. It's free speech, man. Do what you do what you got to do. I'm just letting you know this has nothing to do with political stances. Okay? All right. And watch. There's still going to be someone in the, uh, the comment section. Oh, my God. This, this, whole, you're, this was a hit piece on Roger Ailes and Fox News. Okay, um, Okay. so I remember when I saw the trailer to this thing, I was intrigued. I thought it was a really well-cut trailer. You know, there was mystery, there was intrigue. I was like, ooh, like, Charlize Theron looks nothing like herself. Like, the makeup team is just killing it. This thing looks like it could be a serious awards contender. So I saw the movie, and I like it with reservations. I think there's some issues with the film, but I think for the most part, I like it. I don't love it, but I do like it. So to start with Jay Roach, because I think mainly the film's issues kind of fall on his shoulders. So what Jay Roach decides to do as a director is make the conscious decision to shoot this thing, edit this thing like the big short, the movie that came out four years ago about the the bank collapses in 2008 and the, the recession. It was shot kind of like a mockumentary. It would sometimes cut to Charlize Theron talking to the camera. It was very, you know, fastly cut. Like it just, it felt like that same type of energy as The Big Short, a mockumentary type of feel where they're talking to the audience, but then, you know, um, you know, still having the story kind of play on in the background. I think my issue with this is that Jay Roach didn't know how to commit to this style He also didn't know how to commit to tone. To talk about the style a little bit, it seemed like within the first like 15, kind of 20 minutes, he committed to that style where like they they showed real life photos of Roger Ailes and real life uh, photos of Fox News and with Charlize Theron kind of narrating in the background. She talked to the camera and I was like, okay, this is the style that they decided to go with. Let's see if it works out in the long run. After 15, 20 minutes, they abandoned that idea, and then it's just a straightforward narrative. I mean, I, I guess if that was like kind of your opener for the movie, well done. 
but it makes it seem like that's what the whole movie is going to be. Now, if you did with like the first like five, maybe ten minutes of the movie, and then you went to the narrative, I might be okay with it. But you do it for a long period of time, and then it just randomly stops, and then it's just a, a, a narrative, you know, going forward. So the style it just doesn't commit. It's lost in translation after the 15, 20 minute mark. So that's confusing. The second thing is tone. Listen, the Big Short. Uh, since this movie wants to be so much just like it, uh, so much just like it. it, guys, it's been a long night. Um, the Big Short had comedy, it had your drama, it was a suspense film, it was just, it was such a sharp movie. It knew what it wanted to be, and Adam McKay did that. It was, it was a, a thing from start to finish that set an idea out there and saw it through. With this one, with Bombshell, it's so weird because there's a lot of great dramatic scenes. There's a lot of great, well-written scenes. The dialogue is just spicy and it's just hitting back and forth between characters and you get invested. Then there's certain moments where it plays out like a comedy and there's comedic lines that are being delivered in sometimes serious situations. I mean, we're dealing with sexual harassment here in the workplace. I'm not saying you have to have like this drab movie the entire time, but why are you even attempting the comedy? It's like there's several moments where like Charlize Theron almost says something to Cole Kimmon or Margot Robbie, and it's just, I don't know, it just it didn't feel right. It didn't feel like it connected really well with the actual narrative. Um, you know, the delivery of the lines were fine, but it's just the, the content. It just... The, and the substance of the line just didn't really make sense with me. So, like I said, I'm not saying you need to make it drab the entire time, make it super depressing, but I don't know. It's just the comedy didn't work for this at all. Cut it out. Um, commit to that style and make it a straight drama or, or whatever. I just, I don't know. It was just really conf confusing with the, the kind of tone shifting here. And it was just extreme unbalance going on. I thought it was cohesive in the sense of like from A to B to all the way to Z. I, I followed the story and the characters and knew what was going on. It's just there was just a lot of things kind of underneath it that was supporting the narrative that just, you know, didn't really support it too well. There's some cracks in there. So um, that would be honestly, that's my only issues with the movie is uh, tone shifting and uh, that unbalance. And then the actual commitment to a style that J. Roach wanted to do. I, I hate to say this, but it is like a a step sibling to Big Short and Vice. It really is. Now, with all the negativity out of the way, I do think for the most part, Jay Roach hits home what he's trying to hit home, which is this is something that happens in workplaces all the time with sexual harassment or just abuse of power from bosses or whatever. It doesn't matter if it's Fox News. It could happen anywhere. They decided to go with this story because it was based on real life stuff. This is not something they just made up. This was worldwide. I mean, this the headlines for this thing went across everywhere. This is a real thing. So it's not just Fox News. There's it, This happens everywhere. So getting to the, the core of the problem with sexual harassment and abuse and just how it affects people, you know, mentally and emotionally and just how draining it can be on a person that's being abused because they just feel like they... They can't do anything. Like they just, they feel emotionally drained to where they can't call for help or they just feel defeated and, you know, maybe even intimidated. It's just all those elements of the movie I thought worked pretty well. And it there was a lot of scenes that were really effective and they drove the point home. Some scenes that made you feel uncomfortable and just feel slimy and gross as you're watching this thing. But, you know, it's, uh, it's just one of those things to where, they wanted to highlight some of the some of the kind of you know testimony and stories that people have, have said about Roger Ailes and just when you see it in person, you see it kind of like on screen like that. It's just it's really really disturbing. So it, it, you know it's one of the, it's one of these films that's a cautionary tale. It's like if you're doing this BS in, in the workplace and you're you're a boss and you're abusing your power and harassing workers and stuff. I hope you watch this and I hope you realize that. I hope you get caught. I hope you get arrested, thrown in jail. It's just, it's, it's, it's gross. 
and it's just it's demeaning on people and i i mean i don't know what else to say i think everyone can agree on here that sexual harassment and abuse is pretty terrible um and so those moments really really hit and speaking of really hitting let's talk uh let's talk about the acting just like with like Knives Out and like Avengers Endgame, I think whoever was the casting director for this movie needs to get a raise. Needs to get a raise. Um, this is a really stacked movie with a bunch of people. So let's start with the top and we'll kind of work our way through some of the supporting people. But I also want to keep some of the surprises hidden because there's so much. Charlize Theron as Megan Kelly is astonishing in this movie. Not only is the makeup bleeding into her face, you know, metaphorically, um, it bleeds into her face to where you can't even tell that is Charlize under all that. The the makeup and the the you know hair and just everything about the cosmetic side of this film is is mind blowing. I don't know how they did all that stuff, but it's not just about the makeup; it's about the performance. Charlize is. She's great in almost everything that she's in. But there was something about this one where she got the the cadence and she got the voice of Megan Kelly right. And Megan Kelly, it to some people, it might seem like a bad person or some people might seem like a good person, depending on how you view her. But I think Charlize brings a humanity to her. So even if you hated Megan Kelly, I think you can go into this movie and be like, okay, like she's adding a lot of soul to this person and she's really commanding i love the fact that she's she's like a boss uh, on that like newsroom floor in fox and like, she just walks around owns the place love it um nicole kimmon is also really great i know a lot of people are saying that uh charlie's theron and uh margot robbie are stealing the show what rightfully so i i get that nicole kimmon she's great in everything <laughs> i mean this this woman can do no wrong she just she pops in the movie i'm like how do you do this? Even to this day, just knock it out of the park one by one. But her is Gretchen. There's a lot of pain and anguish there. And I just, I really felt her character along her journey. And she was really, really great in this movie. Margot Robbie is actually fantastic in this movie. Um, there's a couple scenes, both of which she breaks down. And it got me. And I was like, oh, God, this is really rough to watch. There's one part where she's on the phone has a really great kind of uh, uh, mental breakdown of why her character is just is feeling the pain that she's feeling and it's just it hurts you as you're watching it. Oh, and the other scene. Oh, boy. And this will bleed right into um, what I think of John Lithgow's performance. Uh, she's, in a, she's in the office of Roger Ailes and it's just, it's really uncomfortable. And it, it, you could hear a pin drop in the theater, especially when I watched it. Like everyone was just kind of stunned. Because we're like, we know what we're watching is bad. And this is like, we want to help this person, but we can't. And it's just, it's, oh, it's so slimy and gross. But yeah, she sells that scene flawlessly. John freaking Lethgow. Who would have thought he would play Roger Ailes in a movie? I think, listen, doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you fall on. I think if you look at this kind of stacked evidence against Roger Ailes and you have all these people coming out with similar stories and stuff, it's kind of hard to refute it at that point. Yeah, bad man. And I know he's not alive to, to defend himself, but he's a bad man. Just the way it goes. And John Lithgow, I think, captured that monster that was living inside of Roger Ailes. It is a performance that is un, just uneasy everything that he does like you just you feel like shaky in your seat because you're like i don't everything that he does like talk move around it's just it's it's just not appropriate behavior and so um i think with his performance being as terrifying as it is and the makeup that's kind of caked on to him i think he does a fantastic job kind of portraying this um you know a real life person that most likely act this way now i know not all of us were in the room of Roger Ailes and what he did, but I think the testimony of these women and just more and more keep coming out. It's like, like I said, kind of hard not to believe at that point. But yeah, John Lithgow is amazing. Uh, Kate McKinnon's in this. She's just great. I mean, it, you know, I, I thought uh, 
she got a bad rap for Ghostbusters. I thought she was just fine. Uh, probably the better part out of the four. Maybe a little caricature, caricature kind of riding that thin line. But she shows that she has, you know, chops outside of SNL. This one is a great role for her. A great role to kind of sink her teeth into. It's a supporting role. That's all she needs. And it, it helps her quite a bit. Um, a few people from um, Netflix shows that I watch pop up in this. Uh, maybe some network shows. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. This movie is stacked. And like I said, give the casting director a raise. It is totally worth it. Um, I think even uh, in, to kind of bleed off uh, into the, the kind of editing and the kind of cinematic style, even though it's kind of stylistically unbalanced and totally unbalanced, I do think it is a well-shot movie, um, especially when you get inside of the Fox News Network. I know they had to probably build that from scratch. It looks like a legit new space, and it just um, you really feel like – you're, you're on stage with these people. You're on camera with them. You're feeling the, the hustle and bustle of the work environment. You can feel everyone's energy in that room. It's just, it's a really, it kind of makes you feel claustrophobic a little bit. Um, but I, I think that cinematic styling uh, kind of works with it, as well as the editing. It's a very uh, tightly edited movie. I think it's like an hour and 47 minutes. It, you know, flies by. Uh, I was invested the whole time just because I was just kind of in awe by everyone's performances. But um, I think if... Uh, this is, I know the subject matter is a little, a little rough, but if you can get kind of past that and you want to, um, watch this movie, uh, I, I think you can find enjoyment of it. To be honest with you, even if you are right or left, uh, leaning on the political spectrum, I honestly don't know who's, who, who's going to enjoy this movie. Like, Cause like I said, it's a very rough movie to watch and it's very, you know, it feels raw and real in terms of like how workplaces are in some places. I, I guess I honestly don't know how people are going to react to this movie uh, politically or subject matter wise. I just, I, I honestly don't know. So please let me know down below what you thought of this movie. If you loved it or if you hated it. If you want to call me a, a libtard or whatever to get off your chest, totally fine. But Roger Ailes was a bad person. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I'm going to give this movie a B minus. Um, I was kind of writing on. <sighs> I was writing on like a C, C plus for the entirety of the movie. I was like, this seems like a pretty fine movie. There's some spikes here and there of like greatness. But the performances and the makeup and uh, some of the scenes are so well done. I had to go up from like a C, C plus to a B minus. And I'm going to give it that minus and not the actual B or B plus because of some of the directing choices. So that's my review of Bombshell. I know this was long-winded. I apologize. But there was a lot to discuss uh, about this film. Mm, excuse me. So if you do check it out, let me know. Uh, if not, uh, that is also okay. But uh, that will do it for this review, guys. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get more reviews just like this. This is it for this review, guys. I'm Chase Lee, and tune in next time for whatever I review next. I will see you guys later.